And I'm like, boot camp co-host. <laughs> You take every day as it comes. You put one foot in front of the other. Oh, it drives me. There's a breath of fresh air. We all think he's a monster. Well, he scored 81 points in a single game, making him the second highest scoring player per game in NBA history. Kobe Bryant was on top of the world at the beginning of 2006, but then things got rough a few months later when he was accused of rape. It's been about a year since he was acquitted, and since then the NBA star has bounced back. Last week he was here in Beijing, the fifth and final stop of his supernatural tour of Asia. My colleague Jennifer Xiong got to catch up with the Lakers guard, who came to promote his new Kobe Two Shoes and give local kids a dose of his training style. You talk about this, uh, you're going to work the kids harder this year and show them what your re training regimen is really about, kind of like boot camp coaching. <laughs> so can you give us more of an idea of what your, your training regimen entails? Well, you know, for, personally for me, it's, uh, you know, what I give the kids is an abbreviated version of it. You know, I work with them for about 30 to 45 minutes or so and just show them some of the exercises that I do and just give them a little snapshot, if you will, of, of my training regimen. Um, but I think the, 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 the real key uh, that we want them to take away from this is the work ethic that you have to put into it. And, uh, you know, you're not going to like it. You know, I don't like it because you know, sometimes, you know, your body just hurts, your legs hurt and they're sore. But that's how you get better. And the only way that you can get better is by pushing yourself beyond what you believe you're capable of, of doing. Uh, and, you know, that's where we try to that's, that's the message that we try to instill in these kids in these clinics. Um, now, Team USA recently won the uh, FIBA Americas Tournament with a perfect record. And um, you proved to be the star of all stars in Vegas. You really upped your defense and you kind of sacrificed your offensive play. Now, do you think that this is like the same Kobe that scored 81 points in a single game? Or do you have a new definition of leadership now? No, I think, uh, you know, for me, scoring is something that you know, I do when necessary. You know, it's not something that um, I feel like I have to do or enjoy doing to the point where it's a detriment to the team. You know, I, I score when I have to score. I'd much rather get other guys involved and, uh, you know, have them score 25, 30 points, have career highs and things like that. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it, shots aren't falling. You got to take games over and, and that's what I do. Uh, but on the Olympic team, on the USA team, it was, it was, it was a breath of fresh air mm -hmm. um, because I could really focus on what I really, really love to do, which is play defense. I mean, I just love it. Uh, and I just like guarding everyone off and just It's just fun. You know, uh -huh. when, you, when, you, when you come into a game and you know you're going up against a person who's averaging, you know, 27 points, averaging 25 points, and you know that for your team to be successful, you have to slow him down. Your team is counting on you to stop him. I really enjoy that, and uh, it, was, it was really easy to sacrifice the scoring part of it. That, I don't worry about that stuff too much. Okay, and Team USA has qualified for the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and definitely strong contenders to take home the gold medal, you know, next summer. So how does that make you feel, having this chance to win an Olympic gold medal? Oh, it makes me feel, makes me feel great, I'm fortunate. You know, and, and blessed to, you know, you, you put on your team uniform, uh, it means a lot. Uh, but when you're talking about USA, it's not, it's not breaking up, broken up into a region. You're not talking about East Coast fans, you're not talking about West Coast fans, you're talking about the United States of America. You know, so you're representing your country. So the sense of pride uh, that we have when we put on that uniform just goes through the roof. Okay, and now focusing a bit to, you know, we're in China, we got to talk about Yao Ming for a minute here. Um, Houston Rockets, they had an early exit last season. You know, they pushed the game, the series to game seven, but I think maybe their lack of leadership failed them again. So what's your assessment of Yao Ming's game now? Do you think that, you know, he can make a breakthrough next season? I think he's already broken through, to be honest with you. I, you know, it was just unfortunate for Houston because they had so many injuries. Mm. I mean, that's what really hurt him. I mean, they had injuries to Tracy McGrady, he had an injury to Yao Ming. Uh, and then when they were both healthy, you know, they made that incredible run at the end of the season to get into the playoffs. Um, so, you know, if they could just stay healthy, I mean, they'll, they're going to be a really, really tough team. Mm -hmm. um, but Yao, Yao around the league in terms of what other players say about him, they, we all think he's a monster. 
Okay, and any like quotes or kind of things like when times get rough, things that you tell yourself, you wake up in the morning, like? Just keep moving forward. Keep moving keep forward. Keep moving forward. That's what I, you know, try to instill in my kids. That's something that we as a family abide by is just, you know, you, you take every day as it comes. You put one foot in front of the other. Uh, you don't look back. You don't look too far ahead. Uh, but you enjoy the moment. And what about this thing about winning? Like, is that a really strong motivator for you? Like, that goal, like, I have to win. Does that push you? Like, win no matter what? Oh, that drives me. You know, because that's why you play. I mean, you play to compete at a high level. So, you know, if we're going to play basketball, if we're going to play, I don't know, badminton, you mm -hmm. know, if you want to play to win because that makes it more fun. You know, if you're just out there playing and just hitting the ball around. It's like whatever, right? Right, it's kind of like whatever. But once you, you know, dive into that, to that mode of competing, then that's when it becomes more fun. Even if you're competing against your best friend or whatever, it makes it, makes it more interesting, you know, because you're playing for something. Okay, you've been playing pro for 11 years now. What's your plan after the NBA? Well, I, I have several plans. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's certain things that I, that I love to do. You know, I don't talk too much about them because, you know, I, I, um, you know I, we have great staff. I have, I've been fortunate to have a great staff to be able to keep uh, some of these businesses running and I'm still playing and they do uh, a great job at it. Um, so, um, but there are just very, just, there's a myriad of things in the business world that, that I'll dip into uh, once, uh, once my career is over. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Kobe. Very welcome. Very welcome.